Hello everyone. In this video, we are going to discuss the Darcy's law, which is used to calculate the flow velocity and the Dupit's theory for the calculation of the discharge for aquifers. So let's start. So first of all, what is the Darcy's law? Of this Darcy's law that is used for determining the groundwater velocity, the rate at which the water flows in the ground stage. Now, on the basis of the experimental evidence collected by H. Darcy, who was a French scientist, he initiated a new law which was governing the rate of flow, that means the discharge through these soils. According to him, the discharge was directly proportional to the head loss and the cross-sectional area of the soil and it was inversely proportional to the length of the soil samples. In other words, if we write this mathematically, so the discharge that is represented by Q that is proportional to the head loss HL into the cross-sectional area that is A divided by the length of the soil sample. But this ratio of HL upon L that represents the rate of loss of head because this is the loss of head that is represented by HL and if we divide that by L that means the loss of head per unit length that is what we are calculating. This is known as the hydraulic gradient which is denoted by a symbol I. So in place of HL upon L we can replace this by I into A. Now if we remove this proportionality sign we get a constant value that is K into I into A. Now this is the formulation given by the Darcy's where K is a proportionality constant and when we experimented and the data was collected regarding the different type of soil, it was found to be changing with the type of soil and therefore it was represented as the property of a soil. And that property is known as the permeability or the coefficient of permeability. Now this equation becomes dimensionally compatible because we know this Q is the rate of flow that is cubic meter per second. For the K we do not know the units. For hydraulic gradient this is length upon length so it will be unit less into the unit of area is square meter. So if we cancel this out so the unit of this permeability that is meter per second. So the above equation becomes dimensionally compatible if this permeability has the units of length per unit time that is the units of the velocity. The Darcy's law this was demonstrated to be valid only for laminar flow conditions that means when the flow is taking place in such a way that there are adjacent laminas which are flowing one over the other which in case of soil is not at all a serious problem because the flow in sands, silts or the clay that is invariably laminar. We do not need to make the flow to be laminar. Now from the previous equation that is Q is equal to Kia if we divide both the sides of the equation by the area, so it will be Q upon A is equal to K into I A divided by A. So this A will be cancelled out. Now from here, this Q upon A that is discharge upon area that is known as the velocity and that is, is equal to K into I. Now where V is the discharge velocity and is not the actual flow velocity through the soil medium. And the difference between this discharge velocity and the actual flow velocity is that this discharge is taking place through the voids of the cross-sectional area and not the 
area total area in itself because of this this is considered to be the superficial velocity now if we consider the area of voids to be av then in that case the area of voids that is multiplied by the actual velocity that is taking place through the voids will be equal to the total area into this superficial velocity where vea is the actual velocity of the flow through the soil then v will be calculated as va into av upon a now if the area of the medium is large in comparison to the area of the voids we can safely assume that this ratio of av upon a that is same as volume of voids to the total volume and this is nothing but the porosity in itself therefore the flow velocity or the discharge velocity that is is equal to the actual velocity into the porosity therefore the discharge velocity is lesser than the actual velocity so that completes the discussion regarding the darcy's law now next is dupit's theory so this dupit's theory was originally considered and it was the first one out of dupit's and the theme's theory however we usually discuss the theme's theory first and then the discussion of dupit's theory is carried out after studying the theme's theory it is bit easier to study about the dupits now in dupits what are the changes than the themes first change is that no observation well is constructed in case of the dupits theory as was in the case of themes formula the main well is pumped out so as to get the sufficient drawdown and then the rate of pumping is so adjusted so as to establish the equilibrium condition that is the steady state is achieved that means the rate of inflow that becomes equal to the rate of outflow and if this happens then water level in the well that becomes constant now all the assumption which we have made in the themes theory that hold true in dupit theory also the only difference here will be that instead of the limits which we used in the theme theory that is r1 and r2 which were the radiuses of the two observation wells here we will be integrating it in the range of rw to r where rw is the radius of the main pumped well and r is the radius of the influence now what is this radius of influence it is the distance from the center of the pumped well to the point where the drawdown is zero or is it appreciable that means where the drawdown has completely been eliminated now we know that we are having two types of aquifer one is the unconfined aquifer other one is the confined aquifer so one by one what are the formulas given by the dupits that we are going to discuss now dupits formula for the unconfined aquifer so here there is only one impervious strata and the top layer is free therefore we can easily extract the water out of this as we start extracting the water out of it the water level drops down to this hw level and the same profile is managed up to the last point of the drawdown so this shape which is assumed that is known as the cone of depression now we know that this discharge is is equal to k into i into a where i is the hydraulic gradient so if we consider a small section so for that the height of the water level that is dh for length of dr area of this cylinder that is 2 pi rh here k is the coefficient of permeability now if we rearrange the terms this will be dr upon r that is is equal to 2 pi k upon q into 
h into dh we have to integrate this equation so the radius will be varying for the main well this is the main well having the radius rw and this is the point where the influence zone is eliminated so this radius is known as the radius of influence denoted by capital r so the limits will be rw to r for the level of water from hw to the complete level that is d so if we integrate this what we are getting as the natural log of r now limits for this r from rw to capital r then 2 pi k upon q this is h square by 2 limits are from hw to d so this will be natural log capital r upon rw is equal to this 2 will be cancelling out the other two so it will be pi k upon q limits from d square minus hw square therefore the rate of flow if we summarize it it will be pi k into d square minus hw square divided by natural log of r upon rw now if we remove this natural log so this discharge can be written as pi k into d square minus hw square divided by 2.303 log base 10 r upon rw this is the discharge through the unconfined aquifer now we will discuss the formula for the confined aquifer so the dupitz formula for the confined aquifer now in this case you can see that both the sides are impervious and this is the radius rw for the main pump well capital r is the radius of influence and d is the total depth while h is the depth of the confined aquifer now this is the another impervious layer so again we will use the same formula that is according to the darcy's law q is equal to k into i into a then again q is equal to this is k i will be dh upon dr for smaller area into 2 pi r up to the height h now this height becomes constant because always the height of water in the main well that will be greater than the height of the aquifer therefore this will become constant now if we rearrange the terms this will be dr upon r that is is equal to 2 pi k upon q now this time h will also be coming out dh now the limits for r they are still the same that is rw to capital r while for dh it will be hw that is the height of water in the main well to the total depth of the medium that is capital d where d is the depth of the well or height of the aquifer below the original piezometric surface so below this original piezometric surface what is the height of the aquifer now if we replace the terms here so integrating this will be natural log of r ranging from r w to capital r this will be 2 pi k h upon q it's this will be h varying from h w to d so the range will be converting it into the log base 10 2.03 log base 10 capital r upon r w is equal to 2 pi k h upon q d minus h w therefore q can be written as 2 pi k into h now this d minus h w this is denoted by another term that is given by capital s divided by 2.303 log base 10 r upon r w now this is the formulation for the discharge 
through the confined aquifer where this s is is equal to d minus hw known as the drawdown that means what is the difference between the piezometric surface and the height of the water in the well that difference the level by which the water has fallen down that is known as the drawdown so this completes the discussion regarding the darcy's law and the dupit theory in the next video we will try to solve some problems based on this thank you